Hi everybody, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts and I'm here to bring you a um, tutorial today. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to go about doing this, um, this project that I'm going to be doing, but um, this is a sample of what we're going to be doing today. This piece on top here is a resin piece that I, um, I did this in a resin mold. Uh, paint it in the white or pour it in the white portion first, let it sit for a while. Then I colored the background resin black, poured that on top of the white, and this is what I come out with um, in the end. And here's another one that is not um, completed yet, but we're going to be working on this one today. And this is just a little fairy with a butterfly, and I added this little pink rose over to the side. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me as an embellishment um, and then I also did this one and this has the the butterfly resin piece over the top and I've got a couple of other butterflies here as well um, and I just took these out to sort of show you guys what I have and what I've been doing with resin um, here's another fairy that's in pink um, so this is kind of what I've been doing lately and um, making tins and um, I'll show you these as well. These, this is a compact mirror that I did with a purple background and white resin um, and this is a peacock obviously and then I've just embellished the um, compact and it's a double mirrored compact. Oops. We have a little piece of glue that was stringing there. So it's a double mirrored compact, really nice compact. And I sell these in my Etsy shop. Um, but they're elegant, they're beautiful, they're very well made. These pieces that are on top are not coming off. Um, it's, it's a quality piece. So um, I really, really, I think of all of the things that I make, I think my compact mirrors are kind of my specialty. My compact mirrors and my tins are my specialty items um, that I've been making for a long time. Here's another compact mirror, and this one is in almost a black. It's really not black resin, but it looks like black. Um, but this one was actually done with white resin. And this resin here is actually clear, and I had put a uh, peacock feather behind I had poured the clear and put a peacock feather in there and then poured more clear over that. Well, in the process, somehow the peacock feather just looks black, um, but it still looks gorgeous, so it, it didn't ruin the piece at all. It's still a beautiful piece. Um, so that's another compact mirror that I did. And uh, let's see, I did a little tin. This is a pill tin that I made out of one of them. And this is another peacock. The peacocks sell really well and really fast in my store as a general rule. So um, I have made a lot of the peacock items. And this is just a um, little tin, little round tin with a screw on lid that can be used as a pill tin or um, for, um, coins or jewelry, rings, things like that to put um, those kinds of things in. Super pretty. Um, and then this is one of the favorites and um, I don't know if I'll be able to show you all of the sparkle in this one and I kind of wish I had done this as a tutorial. This is another one. This is actually a, um, let me see. A, it's what they call a cigarette case. I don't necessarily sell it as that, but it's got this little um, latch on the side. For me, this is a, a really wonderful um, business card holder, but if you can see up close, I've got diamond dust all over the top of this piece, and I don't know if you're going to get much of the shimmer or not, but hopefully you can see how shiny that piece is. Um, I have another video that shows this piece. Maybe I will see if I can kind of attach that video to the back of this one so that you can really see how gorgeous this is um, in real life when you can see it under under the lights. 
um, the sparkle that the diamond dust creates in it. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do, and then here's another one. This is just an old, uh, a jewelry box that um, I altered and turned into a beautiful little ring box and it's got one of the butterfly pieces on it. And then of course, you've already seen these two tins. Super duper pretty and fun to do. I have an order actually for four of these fairies. So that's why today, um, these two are actually going to be fairies because I'm trying to fill my order um, while at the same time doing a tutorial for you all. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now. This one is actually in my store right now. The order, um, the order that I'm I'm filling actually is not going to go out until uh, November. Um, but I'm trying to get a jump on things and get those done and put them aside so that they're ready to go when um, they get uh, ready to be paid for. Um, Sorry, I'm drinking a spot of coffee. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do, this little tin, this is just a regular little um, mint tin. It's not an Altoids tin, it's um, another brand of, of mints. Um, same difference though, although this is a narrower tin than an Alto Altoids tin. However, the thing that I like about these tins, and I'm told you can get them at the 99 cent store. So I need to go over there and I need to buy some more of these. They're smaller, which is great if you're gonna carry them in your purse. And these actually, although they are narrower this way, they have just enough extra length this direction that business cards actually fit better in these than they do in these. So, um, and I like these tins used as business card holders. Um, that's, they fit my business cards absolutely perfectly and I'll show you, I'll pull some of my business cards out and we'll just put them in there. <clears throat> we'll use this one. Okay, I already have a little something in there. This is actually one of the little sheets that comes inside these tins when you buy them, so I do keep those for each one. But these are, um, these are my business cards, and as you can see, they fall right in there and they fit. They don't, they, they're not too big, um, whereas if you're looking at these in an Altoids tin, now here's your regular Altoids tin, and although this looks bigger, The business cards, because I think because the edges are more rounded, the business cards don't just fall in there. So I've used one of these for business cards in the past, but what I had to do was cut my business cards down. So these are really not good for business cards. These are great for business cards. So um, if you're wondering, try and get over to the 99 cent store and buy some of these. They're called Sweetheart Mints. And they come with these little, these little tiny heart mints in them. Um, and they really, really work well as business card holders. And that's how I generally sell them. And that's why people buy them mostly is for their business cards. Um, they're also really great for gift giving if you're giving out um, gift cards for Christmas or something like that and you want a really elegant mechanism to give the gift card in, these work out really well. They're not super cheap um, because a lot of work goes into them, a lot of work and money goes into the resin. And um, so they do, they can be costly for me to make in the long run, but they're totally worth it and they make amazing gift card holders, um, especially at the holidays or for birthdays or things like that. So um, keep that in mind. I have these in my Etsy store. I have tins. I have um, 
I have the little pill containers. I have all kinds of different little things, trinkets and things that you can use. Uh, but let's get started on this one. Um, we're gonna do this one and we're gonna do this one today. And I've, I've painted the bottom half of this one, but not the top so that I can show you what I did with this one because it has a bit of a different finish um, on it. So we'll get into that after we get this one. Um, and, and this is, this fairy, is going to go on top of this tin like that. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is what I did um, with this tin is I painted the entire tin black using this folk art. Um, it's pure black paint, acrylic paint, and that's what I painted this with. And um, what I did was I first roughed up the tin with sandpaper and then I painted over it with the black so that the black will stay. Um, so what I'm gonna do first with this one is I'm going to use this um, rhinestone trim. I don't know where my end went, okay. This is a um, iridescent rhinestone trim and this is what's gonna go around the outside of this tin. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. I'm gonna use my E6000 to, um, to attach the rhinestone around the tin. And I've got a few other things here that I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna be working with, but we'll, we'll show those as we go. Um, don't wanna waste a lot of your time and I wanna try and get as much done in this video as I can, so. And I hope, hold on. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was putting this on the right edge. <laughs> I would hate to get all the way around this piece with this E6000 glue and then figure out that I put it on the wrong side. Um, because I do put it around the whole thing and I'm putting it as close to the top of the tin as I can get because I'm gonna adhere the rhinestone to this edge here that I'm putting the glue on facing upwards. Um, I know I, I say this in all my videos, when you're putting rhinestone around the edge of a tin or a compact or something, I'm almost out of rhinestone chain. Um, you need to make sure for aesthetics that you point that rhinestone up. Um, it's one of my, it's one of very few of my little pet peeves is when people put them sideways um, around something like this and there are times when it is appropriate for them to go the other way Not very many, but there are times when doing them Sideways works and sometimes that's on maybe a round tin or a, a little bit different Design that you're going for But for most of them if you're doing these kinds of tins your rhinestones are always gonna look better pointing up. So just remember that, try and, it, it's, it's not always easy to do. Um, I know it, it can, I'm sorry, I'm looking for my clippers. Um, it can be difficult to keep them in place and, and you know get them just in the right spot like these. I'm gonna have to adjust these, but that's okay. Um, I'll go around and do that. Um, before I actually clip off the end and I got glue on my finger see so these because these these um, rhinestones sometimes the chain will flip on you and it will try to go on it it, it naturally wants to go on its back side um, but we don't want it to do that we want it to point up so just make sure that you go around and you adjust all your rhinestones so that they are pointing up. The corners is where it tends to want to lay down in the other direction. And then once it does that, it wants to do that all the way around. So just make sure you get your corners right. And once you do, you'll be set for the rest of it. Um, so I'm gonna clip this right here. And it's fine if you want to measure and try and, and clip your rhinestone um, apart before you do this. 
I never do that and the reason that I don't is because I'm always afraid because if you're if these rhinestones are turned and and pointing you know that way it it takes fewer rhinestones to go around the tin if you have them facing outward just a couple it's it just a couple less but it does take less so if these have started to point that way and you don't realize it and you get around here um, you know and you're you're finishing up you're gonna find you're gonna end up with a gap um, down towards the back where you started your rhinestone and you'll have to add a couple of extra rhinestones which you can do you can always fix the mistake but it's best if you can get one straight chain of rhinestones so if you're if you're used to doing this and used to working with you know a, a larger piece of rhinestone while you're going around the tin you know I suggest that you just try and try and do it on the spool and get around the whole thing before you clip it that way you can be positive that you've got the right amount of chain there on that piece okay so we have a rhinestone chain on there make sure that before you embellish this any further this is the back, this is where the hinges are, and this is the front. So I wanna make sure that my piece, my top piece is on there correctly so that it's facing that direction. This is the front, this is the back of the tin. So we're gonna put this piece just like this. And I'm going to um, attach this with E6000 always use E6000. It works better than any other adhesive for these kinds of surfaces. These are smooth surfaces. You don't want to use hot glue because hot glue is not going to stay, you guys, and I can't stress that enough. If you use hot glue on something like this, it's going to stay maybe for a few days and it's going to end up popping right off. What I do do is I use hot glue in a couple of spots where I don't have the E6000 so that when I press this down it's going to stay and the 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 hot glue is going to set before the E6000 does this way I can still work with the tin and it's going to stay long enough for me to finish doing the work that I want to do so that is stuck down onto the tin and the hot glue is going to keep it there long enough for me to finish embellishing. And I boo-booed because I had every intention of putting this behind there. Oh, darn it. Darn it all. Okay, uh, that's okay. Um, so this one, what we will do is we'll take, I've got some other lace embellishments that I can use. I'm just going to grab my box of lace trims and things and we will find a small trim that we can use on that. Okay, I think what we're going to do, that's a bummer because I really, really, really wanted this to be kind of behind that. I was going to Put it, I was going to put this sort of off to the side and this kind of coming off to this side. And I'm really bummed that I, that I messed up on that. That, that hurts my feelings. <laughs> but that's okay. It'll be all right. I'm going to use this on the next one that I'm going to do. And I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this trim. And we need to cut it. Right there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lighter and I'm going to melt the edges of this so that it doesn't fray okay okay so we're gonna have to use that again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little piece of this to each side of this fairy and we'll do the same thing with that piece. And cut that, whoopsies. I'm gonna cut 
cut this one a little bit. And same thing. And I'm going to size that up on the other side. And we're going to cut that one right there. And do that. And that's all we're going to need of this. So next what we're going to do is we're going to use <clears throat> We're going to use E6000, but I'm also going to use hot glue on these little pieces to get them to adhere right away. So I'm going to line the edge of my fairy piece with E6000. And the E6000 takes a little longer to dry, so you have some working time with this. And then what I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on these little flowers, the little pink parts, and then I'm going to lay this on there, making sure that it's in the right spot, just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing with this piece. Place it right next to the fairy and then just press it down. And we've got some extra glue there, a couple of strings, but that's okay. We'll take care of that. Okay, and that hot glue gives it just enough stick that it won't go anywhere while that E6000 is drying. And because we have E6000 on there, um, we are good to go. So there is this one. And I haven't really decided, you guys, since I don't really have to have these ready until November, I may put some of these in my store um, to try and sell between now and then because right now, um, I know a lot of you know, I am taking care of my mother. She's on hospice and we're trying very hard to have enough income to keep that going and to be able to continue to keep my mom home with us um, without me having to go back to work and that's not an easy task. Um, prior to um, leaving my job to take care of my mom, I worked in hospice. I was um, a volunteer supervisor for a uh, nonprofit hospice here um, locally and let me tell you, it was the most wonderful job ever. Um, and it gave me the practical experience that I needed to be able to um, take care of my mom when the time came. Um, but as you all know, when you have to give up your paycheck um, to do something like that, uh, it's, it's hard on the finances. And um, so it has made things a little bit difficult here on the home front. So I'm trying to get as much um, into my Etsy store right now um, and available and hoping that business picks up um, relatively well um, so that I can continue to stay home and take care of my mom. So um, since it is so soon, it's only August, I may just go ahead and put these, um, in fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to put these in my store, and then as it gets a little closer, maybe in October, I will fill my order that's going to be paid for in November. So, um, but I know that order is going to come through. It's a lovely lady that I know that wants um, one of these for each of her granddaughters. So she's purchasing four of them. And I, I want to say she did something similar last year um, at the holidays that she wanted to uh, purchase some stuff for her granddaughters. And so, um, so I know that, you know, that's, that's going to go through. I don't have a problem or a worry in the world about that, but, um, for now, I think these, these definitely are going to go into my shop. So there's that one. Um, okay. So we are at 25 minutes now. I'm going to show you, um, as quickly as possible, what I'm going to do with this one, how I'm going to paint it and prepare it, um, for 
this fairy. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started on that. I'm going to use my black folk art paint and I'm going to use this um, chocolate cherry is the other color that I'm using. And this is more of a sort of a, a dark brown color, but it has almost like a, a, a reddish tint to it. A rusty tint is what I would really be saying I'm going for. I don't need that lighter anymore. Um, so here's my black and here's my chocolate cherry. And as you can see, the, the color variation is slight. I don't think you can really see it well in this camera at all. Um, but anyway, this is definitely lighter than this is, and it gives more of this rusty sort of look to the tin. And I know you can see sort of that reddish um, in the background. So the first thing that we're going to do on this tin is we're going to take the black, and I have already scratched up this Altoids tin. It's all roughed up, and it's, it's, the surface is scratched, and it's ready to go. So, um, but make sure when you're going to do um, altered tins that you do rough up the surface before you start painting these um, because um, otherwise the paint's going to chip off and peel off and you may get a little bit of that regardless, um, but these are not made to be um, pieces that are perfect this is you know this is going to be sort of a rustic looking piece and so if a little bit of tin shows through that's okay um, not to worry um, so what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to step away for just a moment I'm going to hit this with my blow dryer so that I can start working with the brown so I'll be right back Okay, so now we have the, the black paint dried. I went back and I used my blow dryer on it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my brush in this brown uh, paint. And I'm just going to sort of start swiping over the top of this to give it a more sort of rusty look. And I'm just doing it in spots. We still want the black to show as well. So don't go crazy. Um, but do make sure that you give it that, that look. And then we're probably going to use a little bit more black to go over the edges to kind of give it a, a finished sort of rustic look. And I'm even kind of going over the edges that I already did on the bottom section of this. Um, okay, so... So that's what it looks like so far. I don't know if you can see the variation in color, but once I put it under the blow dryer and get it dry, you'll probably be able to see it a little bit better. And here what I'm doing is I'm taking the black and I'm brushing the edges because that gives it a more, um, more almost a burnt rustic feel. Okay but we want it to sort of blend. We don't want it to look like, you know, patchwork. So, you know, I just kind of go over it with both colors a little bit here and there until I get it in a way that to me looks rustic and cool. Okay, so we've got all of our black and our, our brown. I'm gonna go hit this with the blow dryer one more time and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we've got that done, um, the entire tin has been painted around the outside, so it's ready to embellish. And what we're going to do, um, oh, I wanted to show you guys too, this peacock. Um, I don't know if I've showed you these um, in any of my videos yet. This is a resin peacock that I poured myself, I made it myself, and it's made with blue, green, and purple resin, 
and a little bit of mica powder and stuff in it. But then I embellished it with all of the rhinestones and stuff. But I just wanted to show you guys. I do have this available in my shop as well. In case you're interested. And these pieces back here, I'm actually, I'm, I'm thinking about, and maybe you guys can comment on this. Without the, without the rhinestones and bling, um, I'm thinking about making some of these pieces and just selling them in my shop so that crafters can use them to place on top of boxes or jars or bottles or what have you um, to make their own crafts with. So I am going to uh, be putting some of them in my shop, but I do want to hear what you guys think about that. If you guys think that's a good idea, if that's something that you think people might be interested in. But this is the way that this looks. And just so that you know, I never paint past where that lip goes. I always keep my tins closed when I paint them so that this line here will be straight as can be. I mean, it's it's off a little bit, it's, but that's okay. We're doing a rustic piece here. But so that the metal is what shows here because if you paint this section, you're gonna end up over time with this opening and closing, opening and closing, you're gonna have scratches all over this part and it's just gonna look bad. And this way, you don't have to worry about that. It's just gonna close down on that metal part and you're gonna be all set. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna use the piece I already cut off. I'm gonna cut another piece of this beautiful um, applique trim. I got this um, trim from my friend Carol Nixon. She sent me a Happy Mail po uh, package um, that I got the other day and oh my gosh you guys you would not believe the gorgeous stuff that Carol sent me in that Happy Mail package. There was these trims, there was um, some bling in there and some um oh my gosh so much stuff lace other lace trims and embellishments and um she sent me a couple of tiny tins and i can't believe i didn't think to pull those out and maybe try and do something with those but that's a video for another day so <laughs> stay tuned for that she sent me some tins that are about half this width and they are super cute and I can't wait to do something with them. But she, I mean this Happy Mail package, if I have time, I'll show it to you guys at the end of the video. Um, if not, I'll show it in another video. But um, man, I'm so blessed and so lucky to have people that send me all of these great things that I can use in my, um, my crafting. So, okay, so this is the one that's gonna go on top of this. And this time we're not going to forget about our flower. And what I wanna do is I'm going to place it so that it sort of, well, I was gonna say so that it sort of hangs over, but now that I'm looking at that, it looks really pretty, but I think it hangs over just too far. So I don't think that's gonna work, darn it. Oh wait, maybe this way. Okay, yeah, this way it will. Yeah, then it doesn't hang over quite as far. Or, I wonder, This is all sewn together and I don't want to destroy that. I have a different idea though. I think what I'm gonna do, Carol also sent me um, some other little pieces. Oh my goodness, what did I do with them? Oh no, oh no, oh no. What did I do with them? goodness oh what a bummer I don't know what I did with them
Oh boy. Okay. Well, I guess we're not going to do that. Um, I don't have those pieces handy. I don't know where I put them. And they would have been actually really, really perfect to, Im oh, oh my goodness, you guys, they were right in front of my face the whole time. These, I'm going to use one of these because I think this will actually work a little bit better because it's smaller. Yeah, I might put one of those on the edge. Okay, first of all, what we're gonna do is we are gonna put some rhinestone chain on this. And again, I'm gonna use my um, iridescent four millimeter rhinestone chain. And I'm gonna use my E6000. And we're gonna make sure that we put it on the top portion. So open your tin, make sure you know which part's your top and which is your bottom. So this is my top. And I'm just going to start going around the top piece and the edge and putting this E6000. But this is just to give you an idea, you guys, if you want to purchase some of these, um, these um, resin pieces in my Etsy store, I'm going to be making a whole bunch of them in different, I may actually put these and also I have this size that, that works great on these tins as well. That's just not what I wanted to do today. So, um, <clears throat> so um, I, I didn't use one of those in today's demonstration. But um, I do sell those too. But I think what I'm going to do, even though these are already sort of embellished, which is kind of good for the buyer, um, they already have rhinestone bling on them. Um, I think I may just go ahead and put those in my shop and see how they do uh, and see if anybody's interested in buying them that way um, so that they can use them in their own crafts. So if you're interested, I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. They should be in my, my Etsy shop, hopefully by this evening. Um, I just have to find the time to, to take care of that. Um, again, as you all know, my mom's on hospice and I'm, I take care of her 24 seven. And so depending on how her day is going, um, that kind of dictates how much time I have to work on my, um, my, uh, videos and my projects for my Etsy shop. So I have to make sure she comes first before that so um, she does sleep a lot so um, during the day when she's napping I'm usually working uh, people are always asking me how do you get so much stuff done you do so many projects and really a big reason number one is I don't sleep well at night so many times I will be up until you know um, two o'clock in the morning working on a project I mean there's even times where I'm up at three o'clock in the morning because I just don't sleep well um, of course around three o'clock in the afternoon I have that crash during the during the day I try not to let myself um, crash because I want to be tired at night I really want to sleep at night when I'm supposed to um, so I try not to let myself crash, but there are days when three o'clock hits, if mom's asleep, I'm gonna take a little nap. And mind you, a nap for me is 15 minutes tops. Um, I, can't, I can't nap for any longer than that. Um, I just, it, that's just how my body works. But after a 15 minute um, nap, I usually feel much, much better and I feel refreshed and ready to kinda finish out my day so I guess that's a good thing that I don't take long naps okay so we have our rhinestone around the edges and it looks really pretty just a little simple box and then what we're gonna do I still ugh, I really want to use this really 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 want to use this and I think I'm going to I'm just gonna go for it um, 
We don't need this rhinestone chain. I'm going to take and put my E6000 on this fairy resin piece. And we're just going to go around the whole edge here and get through the middle. And that should be good enough. And oh, we're going to put some on this floral piece as well. I'm going to try and see which edge it comes out the furthest. I'm going to put a little bit of this E6000 on this as well. Just kind of go around it. I'm not going to put it on the far edge yet because I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Um, and then a little bit of hot glue and we're just going to kind of go around this like that. Put a few dots of hot glue. And we're going to lay this piece right there. Okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I just love these lace pieces. Carol, thank you so much. I wish we had chat -a vision here so that I could tell you thank you and, and know that you're listening to me. <laughs> Carol is also my um, night owl buddy. <laughs> we both tend to be late birds and um, so sometimes at night when we're both awake late and um, maybe crafting or trying to figure out you know what we want to do with our crafts and things we will catch each other and just chat for a little bit um, and talk about what we're working on and all that good stuff so um, we've become pretty good friends we both belong to a group on Facebook that um, is where we we met and made friends and then um, we were able to meet when she came um, here to my area from where she lives and we were able to meet up and go to one of my favorite little craft stores and we did some shopping together and that's how we how we actually met so pretty cool um, she's just a super sweet oh goodness gracious sakes alive I did it backwards I knew it Ugh. Okay, that's okay. Nobody's gonna see that underneath side and we're just gonna pull that extra glue off. And that's what I say about hot glue. See how that comes off so easily? I had this turned the wrong way. Okay, where's my front and where's my back? That's my back. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little more E6000 on this. Boy, I'm so glad I caught that before it really got a chance to stick down with the E6000. Oh my goodness, I would have been heartbroken. We don't want to waste these pieces. These pieces are too expensive and too time consuming to make. So, and these are these are really good, um, super good sellers in my Etsy store. So. I want to make sure that I'm doing them right and we did not hurt a thing we didn't lose any um, any part of the design so everything is all good <laughs> so there we have it we have a finished tin um, with our little um, present piece on top and this beautiful little lace piece and I'm I think what I'm gonna do is take a dot of E6000 on these little edges that are sticking out. I think I'm just going to take a little dot on those and a tiny dot of hot glue and fold those over a little bit. Uh-oh. We need more hot glue. Okay, and we're going to um, just kind of fold those over. Just a tad. 
We don't want them to touch the bottom piece because then we'll lose the ability to open this. And I'm just removing a couple of strings there. Okay, there we have it. There we go, you guys. Super cute fairy tin. Um, I just love these and I think um, they are a lot of fun to make. And, um, you know, and like I said, I, I make them and sell them. I use them as gifts, you know, for friends and family. And everybody just loves these. Um, so this is a, a super fun project to do. You can do this not just using these fairies, but other embellishments that you can put on the top of your tins and make them just look really, really pretty. Um, so these are the two that we did today. Both fairy tins, both a little bit different from each other. Um, and super duper pretty. I just love them both. So um, anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial. And be on the lookout for these to be in my Etsy shop. I'll put a link to my shop down below in the description menu. And, um, and hopefully you all enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget, um, it's Wednesday now. Don't forget to stop by Kiki's sale on Saturday. She'll be doing a sale and she's getting lots of new uh, bling and things in um, to her Facebook page. So I'll put a link to Kiki Sale down below. She sells a lot of these. Um, she's I got um, these corner pieces from her shop. Super duper pretty. I got this acrylic rose from her and these paper roses from Kiki Sale. I got this bling from Kiki Sale. And um, She's just amazing. She's always getting new stuff in every week, and um, you you have to get over there and check out her store. Um, you won't be disappointed. These trims um, also are um, trims that I got from Kiki's sale. Uh, she sells laces and embellishments and bling and uh, trims and things like that, and it's really amazing. So you guys have to stop over and check her out. Um, thanks again for, um, for subscribe for, excuse me. Thanks again for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I do new videos. And if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see me do, please make those suggestions in the comments down below. I look forward to reading your comments and responding to them. And I want to also say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of those people who have um, sent me words of encouragement with regard to my mom and the whole hospice thing. And your prayers have been so welcomed. Um, we need all that we can get and things have been going really, really smoothly, but I greatly appreciate all of your thoughts and prayers and um, kind words of encouragement. So um, thanks so much, everybody, and I will be seeing you soon in my next video. Bye-bye. Blessings.